Today on EMBM, we have a very special e-mountain bike for you viewers. Now, this isn't just any old e-mountain bike. This bike belongs to one of the most successful racers in the world, Jerome Clements. Now, this is a very special bike. We're going to be going for it top to bottom and then catching up with Jerome after. We caught up with Jerome Clements out of the Rock Du Jour Festival and checked out his custom Cannondale Neo Carbon. Jerome opts for the medium sized frame to suit his 5'6 build. So the main frame of this bike is a carbon fibre front triangle with an aluminium rear chassis on this bike. So Jerome is obviously a top level athlete and has lots of personal sponsors on board, meaning this bike is a true custom build. So let's start at the top of the bike and work our way down. We have some Cannondale lock-on grips on there. We've got a Truvative Descendant bar in quite a low rise. I'm guessing around 25, 30 mil on this. Some Code RSC brakes, which has some pretty trick rotors, which we're gonna talk later on about. And the fork that Jerome chooses to ride on his Matera is the RockShox Zeb coming in at 170 millimeters. Wheel wise, well, we've got Mavic D Max E edition wheels on this bike. 29 inch wheel up front, matched with some Michelin Wild, pretty sticky rubber. And the dropper that Jerome's using on this bike is a 150 mil Axis dropper combined with a fabric carbon fiber saddle on this thing. Looks super comfy. Now this bike as stock comes with a 27.5 wheel on it, but Jerome swapped this out to a 29er to be that bit faster rolling and hold its top speed better. Now on the back of this bike, we've got a Michelin Wild Enduro tire, which is a fast rolling tire, again in sticky compound, but running at 2.4 width. And the gearing on this bike that Jerome is running is a 1052 SRAM Eagle set matched up with that SRAM Access derailleur. And up front, chainring wise, he's gone for 34 tooth. Cranks that Jerome uses to spin up that Bosch race motor are some SRAM EX1 units coming in at 160 mil, and he combines that with the HT T1 clipless pedals. SRAM Eagle hollow pin chain, and to make sure that chain never comes off the chain ring, we've got an E13 chain device up front. So Jerome, thanks for joining us, and this looks like an amazing looking Cannondale Matera. Pretty custom, right? Yeah, it's uh, it's my own bike that I customize uh, yeah. for what I need. Perfect, and I hear you got something pretty special going on with this battery from Bosch, right? Yeah, for the race in finale, the loop were not that long, and now Bosch is making 625 battery, and uh, at Cannondale we developed some um, some spacer to give the option to the to the to the rider. So I use this the spacer to put 625 battery uh, to save a bit of weight to redistribute the weight. So like, it was mostly downhill, so. The handling of the bike and uh, was quite important. So uh, yeah, we use some uh, smaller battery and uh, you can also, if you use two, you can have a 500 watt hour. So it yeah. gives you some option depending on the bike ride you want to do. But moving on to the motor, now this is the Bosch Performance Line CX Race. Obviously you had the Performance Line CX before this. Now how does that race motor differ on the trail for you? Yeah, the, the, the race, uh, the CX Race is a, is a bit different. It's the same casing. But uh, a bit lighter inside, and also like uh, in terms of software, uh, we get 400 person support instead of 340, and uh, uh, more direct engagement. So it's more reactive for every little pedal you can you can give in there. And also uh, on the race mode, we have the, the the extended boost that that lasts a bit longer. That helps you to get this extra when you can not turn the pedal completely. You just give a little kick, and it get, helps you to get through like. Uh, two rocks, roots, uh, other things in between two switchback. It's also super helpful so you don't have the time to do a full pedal uh, stroke. So you just want a little kick and yeah. that nice. Perfect. And as I mentioned earlier on the video, you swap the back wheel. So traditionally this bike comes with a 27.5 out of the back. You swapped it to a 29 inch. What's the reasonings for this then? So uh, I used uh, to develop the bike with Cannondale and uh, when developing we knew we were developing the LT and the, and the Motera. So I, I try around with the same frame to have the different uh, feeling and uh, at the end I kind of like the 170 in the front, keeping the 29er because that's what I ride the most on my other bike. So I decided to get to the, the 29er with 170 uh, millimeter travel. Nice. And I heard Tim Flux has done something special to this rear shock on this bike. So again, it's giving you 170 mm travel. Tell us about the Timmy tune. Yeah, so uh, I got this this, uh, this shock from Rock Shocks and uh, went to see Tim if uh, there is a, a special tune uh, for e-bike or something. Say, hey, I did something really cool for um, uh, Yannick Pontal. It works really well with the e-bike, so let me uh, uh, do it the same tuning for you uh, and try it. And actually, it's, it works really good. So. I have a special tune for uh, for my e-bike and uh, it makes me feel good. 
But you're not giving that one away, right? <laughs> so any uh, you need to ask Tim. <laughs> He's the wizard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what's any other nice little custom details or finishes you do on this bike? Any custom parts? Uh, custom part, I have my custom fender from Mucky Nuts with my lucky number on it. Uh, other than that, uh, nothing too special um, at the moment. Uh, no, just uh, maybe uh, I used a, a bit thicker disc. Uh, they're a bit heavier, but uh, I like the bite and on the e-bike with the, with the weight, uh, it gives you a little bit extra performance when you need to slow down. Okay, and let's talk tires and tire pressure. Now, this is something that's continually sort of discussed on e-mountain bikes. So you go for a bigger, softer compound tire up front and something fast rolling at the back, I'm guessing. Can we talk pressures? Do you use inserts, things like that? Yeah, so for me, I don't use inserts because I like the feeling without the insert. And in terms of pressure, uh, with these casing that are quite strong, it's almost impossible to flat. Uh, I use 1.1 in the front and 1.2 in the rear. And what sort of weight are you running at the minute for uh, you as a rider? I was like 68 kilo for me. Of course, yeah, that obviously comes into it as well. And your riding style, obviously very fast. Yes, so Get my riding style, normally I don't have too much problem in the rear because I'm quite forward on the bike. So it's more important on the front uh, that I need to make sure that I have a stiff casing uh, and, uh, and uh, enough pressure. Cool. And you talked to me earlier that you ride a bit of everything in e-mountain bike dirt jump in, normal mountain bike. If you had one bike in your shed, which bike are you going to be pulling out? If I only have one bike, I think I'm going to keep a trail bike, 150, 160, so I can ride everything. Ah, uh, oh, wrong answer, come on. <laughs> I, I cannot imagine myself living with only one bike. <laughs> true, true. Well, thanks for joining us today, Jerome. It's been great to see you and your bike. Thank you very much. Thanks. Nice one. So there you go, an inside look at probably one of the fastest e-mountain bikes out there. Really nice touches on this bike. Let us know down on the comments box down below about any of the sweet touches that Jerome has on this bike. I really love that battery spacer idea. I think that's amazing. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe to us here on EMBN and we will see you in the next one.